you're over 50 or approaching 50, I'm going to talk to you today about why you need to be prepared to retire and how to do it. Uh, you know, my mom's best advice was uh, to live life on, on your own terms. And as I go back and look at every decision that I made, even if decisions weren't very popular, uh, the thing I will always say is I always lived on my own terms. When it was inconvenient for a company for me to change companies, I did it because it was the right thing for me and my family. Uh, when I made any moves that I made, I did what was the best for myself and my family because I had to do it on my terms. Because back in 2001, I was laid off. And being laid off was one of the most impactful things that ever happened to me. And I vowed to myself uh, not to let it ever happen again. And so through the course of my career, it never happened again because I was able to make those terms, uh, changes on my own terms. Well, now when you look at our current environment, people getting laid off, I have a couple of friends right now that recently got laid off and they're in their 50s. And it's interesting, I started to look at some of the statistics and did you know that 61% um, of job changes after the age of 50 are due to layoff? And so if you get laid off, what are you going to do? Are you going to be ready? Are you going to be able to handle it? Um, the, the other piece of that on the flip side is it takes people that are over 50 a lot longer to find new jobs. So on average, it takes people about three to six months to find a new job after being laid off. When you're over 50... That's even, it takes even more time to get a job after you've been laid off. So it, there's a chance that you don't find another job. You know, I talk about my best friend. My best friend was laid off in May of this year. It's November and he's just now getting some strong prospects on jobs that are going to, that are coming through. I have another buddy of mine who got laid off around the same time, just a few weeks before. And guess what? He's not able to find another job. And there's a whole host of reasons. And I'm not going to go into the conspiracy as to why it's harder for older people. But the reality is, is most companies are looking for people that can grow. They're looking for people that are going to be with the organization for a long time. Uh, I think in some cases, they're looking for people who maybe aren't going to have the wisdom uh, or the time behind them to really push back in a way that, you know, unfortunately, most of us do uh, as older people. Um, and, and I think the, the last reason why is because when, you know, when you hit your 50s, and, and please tell me if you agree or disagree with this, but you kind of reach a transition period. When you're in your 20s and when you're in your 30s, you get a new job, you get excited. You go to an organization that tells you good things, you get excited. You get an increase, you get excited. You get promoted, you get excited. But when you start to hit your 50s, you start to realize those things aren't as exciting because most of the time it's more of the same, just in a different in a different environment. And, it, and you know what the outcome is going to be. Plus, you start to see, I don't know the best way to put this, but you, you almost start to more quickly identify some of the stuff that's going on around you in terms of how people work, some of the politics, some of the drama, you just have less patience and you find yourself getting more frustrated. And so when you're in that transitory period, the idea of going into work every day, unless you're an independently employed professional, so if you're like a doctor or if you're an attorney, you may love those things. Or if you're doing something that really finds your passion or fits your passion, that's one thing. But what most of us have done is we found something that was the lesser of two or three evils. And then we convinced ourselves that we were passionate about it because maybe we were good at it or because we found things that we liked. And we went ahead and did those. But when you're in your 50s, you really start keeping it real with yourself in a way that's a little bit different. And you find yourself more frustrated with mediocrity around you. It's just the bottom line. And so... Not only is it harder to keep your job when you're over 50, it's harder to find another job if you do get laid off when you're in your 50s. And then it's hard to overcome those mental challenges that create anxiety for, anxiety for you uh, when you turn 50. So it it's becomes critically important that when you're over 50, you have to prepare yourself for the worst case scenario. You have to prepare yourself uh, for that time where you become potentially one of that 61% of uh, 
that that gets laid off in your 50s because once you hit that that road back up or that recovery it just becomes incrementally diff, uh, more difficult as you uh, as as time goes on and if you're in your 50s it's difficult if you're in your 40s it's difficult if you're in your 50s it's more difficult and then just imagine people in their 60s and 70s and so you know as i as i talk about a lot on this channel is I, I look at things in two ways. Uh, the first thing is, is what does it mean? And the other one is, is how do you do it? And so now I want to talk a little bit about how you prepare yourself for something like that that might happen. Uh, number one, uh, analyze your financial situation. Look at your, look at your debts, your assets, and then what you want. Uh, this is a time where you could you could do a realistic assessment. And again, sometimes the most difficult assessments are the ones we do with ourselves because we can't hide from ourselves. But take a look at your debts. What are those debts that you have? What are those assets that you have? What are those things that you own that if the rubber hit the road that you could sell and make some money on? You know, whether it's selling your house, whether it's selling your RV, whether it's whatever it is, and it's it's a whole different. For those of you that might live out in rural areas, you know, are you able to uh, apportion part of your land or take some of your land and sell some of that off so you can keep your primary home? You know, whatever it is, but you, you start. You have to look at what your relative position is realistically, because if you wait until the time that something happens then it's going to become even more difficult to, to do that assessment. By then it might be too late because there's too much to do in such a short amount of time and it may take you over the edge. Um, then prioritize paying off high interest debts and credit cards. The People ask me all the time, what was the number one thing that attributed that I attribute my ability to find financial independence as early as I did? And it's be, not having high credit card debt. The only debts that I have are my... RV, my house, and we don't even have any, we don't have debts on cars or anything like that. And if I can't afford it, I don't buy it. The reality is, is, and I recognize there's a bunch of people that are living paycheck to paycheck. And the only way they can afford to make ends meet is by using their credit cards. And in that case, I say, is there an opportunity to move to a lower cost area, move across town, or maybe do something less desirable which is moved out of state or something like that in order to find a better cost of living, which a lot of people are doing. But, um, you know, you got to pay off those debts because think about, think about, you know, do some reverse engineering on that. You know, so you, you don't have enough money to pay for your life. And so to buy groceries, you go and you use your visa card and you only pay the minimum payments on that. Well, so you go and you pay the minimum payments on that. So what you're essentially doing is saying, I don't have enough money to cover my life. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use money and pay somebody else for the money that I do have. So that way I'm going to spend even more money on something that I don't get anything back from because I can't afford this. And a lot of times, and again, I'll tell you, as, as we get older, uh, change is difficult. And I've had to make a lot of changes and a lot of adjustments in my life in order to get to where I am today. And if I told some of the folks why some of those adjustments, you wouldn't believe me. And I'll give you an example. Uh, one of the things I don't do is I don't answer the phone if I don't know who it is. It's not because I'm afraid of getting some kind of solicitation call, even though that's what I say. It's because there was a time when I had bill collectors calling me and I knew that if I picked up the phone, I would then be under obligation and under threat of suit by some of these bill collectors. I mean, that's a lesson I had to leave, live. Um, I started looking at my uh, credit report on a regular basis, not because I wanted to make sure I had great credit, just to make sure that if I wanted to buy something and I was going to use a credit card, that what I was able to do was figure out how to get some stuff on, some stuff off, and I would time when things came off so I could see what that did to my credit score, so on and so forth. So, But as soon as I started to adjust what I did, I kept some of those habits because I think those habits are helpful because, again, if I don't know you and I don't want you, I don't know you're coming to my house, I don't want you knocking on my door. If I don't know who you are calling. I don't want you, I don't want to talk on the phone. Let me, you know, and, and leave a message and then I'll call you back if it's, if it's uh, not somebody trying to sell me something. Um, you know, so it's, it's just things like that. But again, you have to make, you have to make those adjustments. Um, and then the next one is, you know, once you've started to commit to yourself that instead of spending money on high interest credit cards and buying a bunch of things that you can't afford, 
that then you start prioritizing catch-up contributions into your 401k. And I, I wish, I, I haven't been in the game for a while, so I don't know what the new laws are, but it was, I think this year, you could put in uh, up to $30,000 in your 401k uh, for catch-up contributions. So there's the standard amount, and then there's the additional amount that you could put in for catch-up contributions once you hit 50. And I'll tell you, it's, it's interesting because um, when you start thinking about compound interest, every day that you, ha you use compound interest, you have the opportunity to make more money. And so when you see these swings in the stock market, and the stock market swings up, uh, about 20 something percent. I think this year we're in the mid to, the mid to high 20s. And then when it was down, it was down 18 to 20 percent. So you're always going to gain generally gain more than you lose if you play it smart and you diversify. And again, I'm not a financial advisor and I don't want this to constitute financial advice. But again, these are things that you could take to a financial advisor and ask the questions. But what you find is that the growth compounds every day. So even if the stock market loses 300 dollars, uh, 300 points in a day, well, if you've had seven days of growth and one day of loss, you're still going to be on ahead most of the time. And the, the reality is there's a whole bunch of people, uh, particularly those in politics, who have a vested interest in uh, keeping their money in the markets uh, solvent. And so there are mechanisms in our economy and in our uh, Fed and our, our Treasury that keeps us from finding a situation where we end up at zero. And ultimately, if you ended up at zero, that means companies would close. And I don't think... Uh, the likes of a J.P. Morgan Chase or a Google or an Apple um, are going to close uh, anytime soon. It, it just because they they're infrastructure plays, and so there's a way for you to uh, to put your money away. But my point being is that if you put you start putting that money into uh, you start prioritizing and putting money into your 401k with those catch up contributions, what you've then done is you've given yourself an opportunity to take advantage of those market conditions over time and not have to pay taxes on those. And on top of that, you don't have to pay taxes on that money when it's put in there, so it's all tax-free money. So, and there's a whole bunch of strategies around that. And if there's, if you'd like more information on uh, catch-up contributions and, and 401ks and things like that, although I can't give financial advice, uh, I can tell you what I know about them and we could create a video around that. But let me know in the comments what you, what you think of that. And then the, the next one, is and the last one I think is in terms of the of the how is just create a plan. Figure out what it is that you want to do. Um, one of the things that my wife and I did after my father passed away is, uh, and I, I mentioned this in another video, and I could I could let you know which one it is if you're interested. So please let me know in the comments. But when my father passed away in about 2017, uh, one of the things I realized is I realized how short life is. My father was 72. Um, and I realized that I'm not that far away. And so what my wife and I did is we set a plan and we didn't know that we were going to find financial independence when we did, but we said, let's start putting some things in place that can help us get to that point. So let's, uh, make sure that we pay off all of our debts. Let's make sure that we have housing costs that are affordable. Let's make sure that we live in a one story house as opposed to a three story townhouse so we don't find ourselves having to walk up and down steps and find ourselves later in life trying to figure it out. And so, you know, we made the move, we did what we did and, and we put money away and that was another one. Let's make sure that instead of putting money in the regular savings accounts, let's put it in the high interest savings accounts and let's get a financial advisor to help us understand how all this stuff works. So once we did that, things started to happen and we got things started to clear out because all the stuff that was creating the noise for us started to clear out. Then we started to see things for what they were. And once we started to see things for what they were, we started to under, see what was possible. And it's, you know, there's, and it started with a plan and the plan didn't necessarily have a time bound outcome because I, I know that when we talk about goals, particularly at work, talk about smart goals, right? Specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely. But the, where we get caught up sometimes is we get caught up on the timely piece and saying, well, we got to have a time-bound goal. Well, a time-bound goal doesn't necessarily mean that you have to have a specific date. Sometimes time-bound could be, look, I'm in my 40s. I want to be out of work by the time I'm 60. So now that gives you 15 to 20 years to be able to put together your plan and get things going. And folks, as I say this and I'll say it again, is that I had no idea that I was going to find financial independence at 51. It, was, it wasn't even something that I had contemplated. 
Um, I, I thought at a minimum I was going to go until about 57, 58. Things started working backwards, and I and there was a chance that I would go even longer. But I knew that if I was going to go 57, 58, I was going to have to make some sacrifices. And so uh, instead of getting in, going down that path that I think a lot of us go down is like, well, what if it doesn't happen? I do all these things. Well, keep making excuses for yourself or you give yourself an opportunity to get there. It's like the person doesn't go to school because they say, well, going to school doesn't mean you're going to get a good job. No, but not going to school means that you're not going to give yourself that opportunity. So my point is, is give yourself the opportunity to succeed and you might just make it. Or as they say, aim for the stars. Worst case scenario, you end up at the moon and you're still further along than you started. Um, and, you know, so then if you if you take some of these real simple steps, then there's only going to be a few outcomes that you get. But these outcomes are going to be outcomes that you wouldn't have had otherwise. Um, you become, you know, over time, you become less anxious because if you're over 50 and you're working at a company, let me tell you, you're anxious right now because if something happens at work, what are you going to do? And if you're not, then that means you're not taking it serious enough. But I I don't think you'd be watching this channel if you didn't take it serious. And so, uh, because you see what's happening around you, you know, I'm, you know, I'm turning 53 next week and I see all these people around me that are my age getting laid off and struggling to get another job. I see, I was, I was an HR guy for 20 something years, uh, 30 years. So I see, I've been on the other side of those conversations and I see how it goes. And I know there's laws to protect people, but it doesn't mean that it doesn't happen. And it happens a lot. Look around at your friends um, and how many of them have found themselves in a difficult spot. So, you know, it's, so if you have a plan, you know, you still might have some anxiety, but at least you have a way out and you have, a path forward so you don't get laid off and then sit there like, oh my goodness, what's going to happen? I don't know what's going on. Um, Number two, uh, the second outcome is that you start to have control over your future. You know, you start, and it's not even that you can control your future because if you try to control your future, then you've just created a whole new layer of anxiety because the reality is, is we don't control anything. The wisdom of the universe controls everything, but you know, you, but you feel like you have a sense of control and you're not just going to get caught off guard and end up in a bad situation. You have a little bit of mastery over your time and your destiny. And I think that's what we all want. That's why we do the thing. That's why we plan. That's why we know what we're going to do on Tuesday. Uh, because we, we want to have a sense of mastery of our own lives. And the way we do that is, is by planning. And so by having a plan and by following these steps, then you have that. And then the last one is, you, and, and I, I think this is an upshot of having mastery of your time and, and of your of your life, is, you know, you start to develop a peace of mind because you realize, I, I think I, I mentioned in another video about how I had a college teacher that told me that the goal is to fill in the holes because once you fill in the holes, then everything on top of that is gravy. So he says, you know, figure out how many points you need to get a C in the class and then everything else, it takes the stress off of everything else because if nothing else, at least you know you passed the class. And so then I did that and going through college, I got B's and A's. But it's the same thing with life. If you know that the furthest you can go is here, then you're not going to be worried about going way down here because you filled in the holes up to that point. And if you have a plan and you have an idea and you're working towards that plan, again, you may not make it to the stars, but at least you make it to the moon. But the moon really is leaps and bounds above where you're standing right now. And so, you know, you develop that peace of mind going forward and you start to feel better about um, your prospects and you don't have uh, as much as much anxiety. So, so folks, uh, so this is why I think even if you're not retiring at 50 and, and all that, because again, it's never my expectation that um, you retire early, but it is my expectation that you live your best life and you're living your best life. If you're able to alleviate stress, have peace of mind and do some of the things that you want to do to be happy. I mean, that's what it is. And if you disagree, please let me know in the comments because I would like to have others debate with you on that point. But at the end of the day, it's about finding happiness and fami- uh, fulfillment and living the best life that you can. Some people have more difficult circumstances. Some people have better circumstances. And so it's not a bad matter of do you have better circumstances than somebody else. The question is, are you mastering your own circumstances? Are you maximizing the circumstances that you have? And if you are, then hey, there's nothing I can say. Um, so, um, so on that note, uh, if you like the channel, you like the content, um, please uh, feel free to subscribe. I, I would ask that you subscribe if you if you haven't already. And then share this with some of your friends, some of your like-minded friends. Because again, my, my goal here isn't to try to press people to retire early or tell people that they're wrong for not retiring early. Because it's it's not always about that. It's about living your best life. And 
living your best life, you know, as they say, romance with no finance is a nuisance. And so a lot of times living your best life is just having control of your financial situation and having some of the tools and tricks to do that. And also mastering what's going on upstairs, because again, it's a lot of times just the anxiety. And I'll tell you that 90% of the things that I worried about when I was working never came to fruition. So, uh, but again, it's, it's hard when you don't have somebody else. And, you know, and, and, I, and I've always said that uh, if I, if, and I tell my friends this, as I say, you know, if, if I care enough about you uh, to answer your question, it's always going to be the truth. You're all my friends, and I appreciate you taking your time. You could have been anywhere else in the world, but not, uh, but you're here with me. I appreciate that. So on that note, have a good rest of your day, and I will talk to you soon.